Chapter 4, The Noose Titans. Wooden hanger, new trench coat. You're late. No, I'm not, I said. I'd be by after dinner. But now it's dark out. I wanted you would climb to the roof. It's a leak in the drain pipe. Huh? But I'm no good at fixing that kind of stuff. Why don't you hire somebody? Ah, you and Mala, you both think money grows on bushes. I'll fix it myself. That's crazy. You can't climb a two-story ladder in your condition. If you want, I'll pay for the handyman. Never mind. Forget I said anything. Just come sit with me. I have to pedal. Otherwise, I get at night a leg cramp. What you're holding? A new tape recorder. Writing things down is just too hard. So how much you paid? Only 75 bucks. It was on sale. Psh! At Corvette's, you could find it for a maximum $35. But skip it. Tell me about when you got back from the POW camp in 1940. When first I came home, it looked exactly so as before I went away. It was still very luxurious. The Germans couldn't destroy everything at one time. It was 12 of us living in father-in-law's household. It was Anya and me and our boy, Rachiv, Anya's older sister, Tasha, her husband, Wolf, and their little girl, Bibi. And it was Anya's grandparents. They had maybe 90 years, but very alert. And of course, it was my father-in-law and my mother-in-law. And also the two kids from your uncle Herman and Aunt Helen, Lulek and Lonya. Herman and Hella were lucky. They were visiting the New York World's Fair when the war came. This saved them. Ah, oh, grandmother, your stew is even tastier than I remembered. No, it's not like before the war of Ladek. I can't get the foods I need. Each of us gets coupons for eight ounces of bread a day and is a tiny bit of margarine, sugar, and jam per week. That's all. So how do we manage? I've donated a lot to the Gemeinde, the Jewish community organization, and Wolf works there, so we get a little extra. And there's the black market. With money, you can always get anything. It's dangerous, though. The Nazis take you off to a work camp for breaking any minor law. Worse, even if you don't break any laws, and those that are taken away, they're never seen again. Well, we should be happy we're all together with enough to eat, but we, we must really tighten our belts until the war ends. Come, let's play rummy while the ladies clear the table. Has the family been talking, taking good care of my Bielsko textile factory? Don't you know? All Jewish businesses have been taken over by Aryan managers. I went to our factory in Lodz, and they said, better go home today, old man. Tomorrow we'll carry you out. What? But it isn't any money coming in? Not a single Zlati. And the family wants to live the way it did before the war. Okay, Vladek, cut the cards. But Wolf, what kind of work are you doing? Just a little office work for the Gmind. But a few months ago, father-in-law took all his valuables home from the bank safe. How long can savings last? Don't worry so much, Vladek. You'll see. The war will be over like lightning. Yeah, like lightning. Ah! Wolf looked only to play cards. I went the next day to Modrajowska Street, where people still made money from secret businesses, not so legal. Psst! Food coupons for Reichmarts? Vladek Spiegelman! Mr. Ilzeki! What are you doing in Sosnowick? Elzeki used to be a customer of mine, the best tailor in Katowice. The Nazis moved me to an apartment here. I make uniforms for their officers and, it's, and suits on the side when I can get the cloth. Are you still in business? I don't know. I just got back from war prison. Well, if you get any cloth, come see me. This note will get you past the doorman. The note told that I worked with him. Such a paper could be useful to have. I went then to shops what still owed me money from before the war. But I can't pay you. A German runs my place now. I'm lucky just to have a job. Then advance me a few yards of material without coupons. Okay, okay, hide this under your clothes. Mr. Ilzeki, please. So I made a nice few Zlotties the very first week I came home. I remember father-in-law was so happy with me. You see, at least there's one smart guy in the family. 
Of course, I only said I got half what I really made. Otherwise, they wouldn't save anything. A little later, I was again on Madra Jowska, looking to buy some textiles without coupons. The SS closed off the whole street to inspect the working papers from everyone. I didn't know before about this. I managed to disappear to a building, but they took maybe 50% of the people away. I talked about it to father-in-law. They almost got me. I'll need more than just Ilzeki's note. That's true. Come, we'll visit a friend of mine who owns a tin shop. I think his overseer can be bribed. And so it went. Okay, Vladek, since we make things for Germany, we can get you a priority work card. Remember, if there's a roundup in here, run, if there's a roundup, run in here and pretend you're working. I learned here to do things what were useful to me when I came to Auschwitz. And so we lived for more than a year, but always things came a little worse, a little worse. Father-in-law had a nice new bedroom set. The Germans looked to grab such furniture because in stores it wasn't any more to get. Wolf and I left everything valuable downstairs for a Polish neighbor to hide. Oof! Are we leaning the other bed upstairs, leaving? Yeah, mother-in-law is too sick. She needs a good bed. Anya's mother had gallstones. The day the Germans came, she lay in the bed. Please don't take her bed. Look at how sick she is. The doctor is here every day. Father-in-law had an old friend who came always over to play cards, and they left without taking anything. You know, I met a German official who would pay well for a bedroom set. Hidden, we had no use from the furniture, so we schlepped it again upstairs to sell. You have excellent taste in furniture here, Zeilerberg. Thank you. My men will be right back to get your wife's bed, too. You cheated us last time, Jew. Wait, I haven't been paid yet. Please, if you want to stay alive, go back inside. He was so unhappy after... So unhappy. One time I was going to see Ilzeki. This was late in 1941, I think. His house was very near to a train station. And it was going on there something terrible. I had to pass near, and they were grabbing Jews. If they had papers or no, what had I to do? Will I walk slowly? They will take me. Will I run? They can shoot me. Then from far, I saw Ilzeki walking. So I went hasty over to him. Hello, Mr. Spiegelman, what are you doing here? Don't you see what's going on? Quick, come upstairs with me until the trains leave. Ilzeki lived in a very fancy house. He was the only Jew there. So I sat with him and his wife a good few hours. We heard shooting and screams. He survived me my life that time. Ilzeki had a son the same age like Rachiv. If you only could see how those children played together. Listen, Vladik, we can't know what's going to happen to us, but we must keep our children safe. I have a good friend, a Pole, who's willing to hide my son until the situation gets better. I think he'd take your boy too. Yes, you may be right. Let me speak with my family. But I'm telling you, it was something terrible going on in our house when I even mentioned it. What? Have you gone crazy? How can you even think of giving Rashiv up to complete strangers? I'll never give up my baby. Never! Ilzeki and his wife didn't come out from the war, but his son remained alive. Ours did not. And anyway, we had to give Rashiv to hide a year later. When we were in the ghetto in 1943, Tasha took all the children to... Wait, please, Dad, if you don't keep your story chronological, I'll never get it straight. Tell me more about 1941 and 1942. So, okay. I'll make it so how you want it. 1941, at the end of 1941, the Germans came with something new. Wolf ran from the Gemeinder. Look, they're putting these up all over town. Order. All Jews of Sosnowick must be relocated into the Stara Sosnowick Quarter by January 1st, 1942. Non-Jews will be moved into vacated premises. All 12 of our household were given now to live in two and a half small rooms. Reward, for every unregistered Jew you find, one kilo of sugar. 
Most people got even less space, but father-in-law and Wolf had a little influence. But this wasn't yet a real ghetto. Still, you could go into other parts of town so long you were home at nighttime. Hold the ladder, Anya. I'm putting up a curtain to give us some privacy. Tasha insisted on getting the part of the room with the window. It doesn't matter, Vladek. I'm just glad the whole family can stay together. It was no more the luxury life we had before. For a couple months, I did hear still my black market business. Then came more bad news, very bad. What's wrong, father? They just arrested my friend, Naum Kohn, and his son. They've taken four Jews away for dealing goods without coupons. I did much business with Cohen. The Germans intended to make an example of them. The next day, we walked o- I walked over to Modrajowska Street and I saw them. They hanged there one full week. Cohen had a dry goods store. He was known all over Sosnowick. Often he gave me cloth with no coupons. I traded also with Pfeffer, a fine young man, a Zionist. He was just married. His wife ran screaming into the street. I was frightened to go outside for a few days. I didn't want to pass where they were hanging. And maybe one of them could have talked to me, talked of me to the Germans to try to save himself. Ach, when I think now of them, it still makes me cry. Look, even from my dead eye, tears are coming out. What was Anya doing around this time? Houseworks and knitting, reading, and she was writing always her diary. I used to see Polish notebooks around the house as a kid. Were those her diaries? Yes, and also no. Her diaries didn't survive from the war. What Hugh saw, she wrote after her whole story from the start. Oh my God, where are they? I need those for this book. Cough, please, Artie. Stop with the smoking. It makes me short of breath. I think it's all your peddling. Don't be so smart. What was I telling you? Yes. After the hanging, I looked for another business. I started to trade gold and jewelry. It was easier to hide than clothings. I kept things hidden in the child's stroller, and I made a few zlotties. For a while, I had also a food business that I didn't yet tell you. I met Sklarsik. He had a big grocery in Madrajowska. You're Zylerberg's son. Son Son-in-law, right? Come inside and wait for the rain to stop. So together we sat and spoke, and he helped from time to time, a customer. Sorry, you don't have enough coupons to buy half a kilo of sugar. Still, she went out with half a kilo. I think I smelled I could arrange something. Then a little more we spoke, and he made to me a proposition. Maybe you could sell my extra items to small shops in the area, under the counter. It was dangerous to carry these things, but maybe I could be lucky. When someone is hungry, he looks for business. One time, I had 10 or 15 kilos sugar to deliver. Halt, Jew! What are you carrying? What was I supposed to say? For this, I could really hang. Sugar? I'm taking it over to my grocery store. Oh, you have a shop? I made so they would think it was legal. I went to the back door where I had to deliver. Open up, pole deck. I've got our sugar. And they left me go without even checking my papers. But when we came to Stara Sosnowik, all my businesses became harder. It was not so easy to move around. The tin shop finished. The owner was the only Jew they let work there. I got then a job in a German carpentry shop. Father-in-law and Lolik worried already there, worked already there for really no money. I didn't need this before, but now I had to have the work paper. Wolf could have arranged me a job at the gym end, but I didn't want to put my hands there where Jews were being taken. And then it came again, something new from the Germans. We got a notice. All Jews over 70 years old will be transferred to Theresienstad in Czechoslovakia on May 10th, 1942, a community better prepared to take care of the elderly than ours in Sosnowick. It doesn't look too bad, like a convalescent home. Anya's grandparents had about 90 years. We've been together, a family, for 70 years. 
We don't want to break apart now. Don't worry, we won't let them take you. We didn't yet know of Auschwitz, of the ovens, but we were anyway afraid. So in the yard, we made a hiding place, a bunker, cutaway view, storage sheds, false wall, grandparents. We sneaked food to them, and when it was safe, we took them inside a little. Several times came the Jewish police to our house. Our records show that Mr. and Mrs. Carmillo live here. They haven't registered for transfer. Yes, my wife's parents. They left without a word a month ago. Jewish police? Yes, with big sticks. Some Jews saw it in this way. If they gave to the Germans a few Jews, they could save the rest. And at least they could save themselves. And a month after, they again came to father-in-law. Mr. Zal Zalberberg, you and your wife must come with us. If the Carmillos don't turn up in three days, you two will be sent in their place. He had still a little protection from the Gamind, so they took only him away, not his wife. He sat a few days there, then he sent to us a note. He wrote that we had to give over the grandparents, even if they took only him away. Now, next, they would grab his wife and then the rest of the family. So what happened? What happened? We had to deliver them. They thought it was to Thersienstad they were going. Let us know if you need anything. But they went right away to Auschwitz, to the gas. When did you first hear about Auschwitz? Right away, we heard. Even from there, from that other world, people came back and told us, but we didn't believe. Then the same news came more and more, so we believed, and later on we saw, even worse. After what happened to the grandparents, it was a few months quiet. Then came posters everywhere and speeches from the Gemind. Fellow Jews, on Wednesday, August 12th, every one of you, young and old, male and female, healthy and sick, must register at the Dinst Stadium. Oh no, now what? There's no cause for alarm. It's only a matter of inspecting your documents and stamping them. This will protect you as citizens of the region. I'm not going. It's a Nazi trap. Everybody was worried. And our Jewish committee is helping those murderers. God's know what, God knows what will happen to us at the stadium. Well, they just inspected Jewish documents in some nearby towns. It was no big deal. Anyway, we've got to go. Without legal papers, we're lost. To go, it was no good. But not to go, it was also no good. My father, he had 62 years, came by streetcar to me from Debraua, the village next door from Sosnowick. Here's a cookie, Rajiv. Aunt Fela baked it for you. Say thank you to Grandpa. After my mother died with cancer, he lived there in the house of my sister Fela and her four small children. I need your advice, Vladik. Should I go to the stadium on Wednesday or hide at home? I don't know. I'm not even sure what we're going to do. Anya's mother says she isn't going. She's sick and afraid. At least Anya's father, Lolik, and I all work at the German woodshop. We're a little safer. But you don't work. You have no papers. You don't have anything. Well, our cousin Mordecai says he'll be at one of the inspection tables. I could bring my papers to him. What does Fela say? She's not sure, but if Fela decides to go, of course I'll go with her. Can I have another cookie? Rajiv! Really, I didn't know how to advise him. But finally, he did go. People were afraid to not show up. So it came to the stadium, almost all the Jews of Sosnowick, and from the other villages near, maybe 25 or 30,000 people. Everyone came very nice dressed, and they tried so that they would look young and able to work in order to get a good stamp on their passport. When we were everybody inside, Gestapo with machine guns surrounded the stadium. Line up by family at the tables to register, quickly! Then was a selection, with people sent either to the left, either to the right. Old people, families with lots of kids, and people without work cards are all going left. We understood. This must be very bad. Me and Anya came to the table where my cousin was sitting. Ah, you work at the carpentry shop. Go to the right. 
so we got stamped on our passports and came quick to the good side of the stadium. Those who were sent left, they didn't get any stamp. We were so happy we came through, but we worried now. Were our families safe? Look, there's Papa with Lolik and Lonia. We saw Wolf and Tasha. Our family seems to be okay. Did you see my father? I couldn't see anywhere my father. But later, someone who saw him told me he came through this same cousin over the good side. Spiegelman to the right. Then came Fela to register. Her they sent to the left. Four children was too many. Fela! My daughter! How can she manage alone with four children to take care of? And what do you think? He sneaked to the bad side. And those on the bad side never came any more home. Those with a stamp were let to go home, but there were very few Jews now left in Sosnowick. One from three they kept at the stadium, maybe 10,000 people, and with them, my father. Well, it's enough for today. Yes, Artie? Ooh, I overdid it a little. I'm feeling dizzy. Maybe you should lie down a while. Are you finished? Uh-huh. My father's worn out. He's taking a nap. He was just telling me that about the time everyone in Sosnowick had to get his passport stamped. In the stadium? Yes, they got my mother then. She was taken with everybody else who was going to be deported to four apartment houses that were emptied to make a sort of prison. They put thousands of people there. It was so crowded that some of them actually suffocated. No food, no toilets. It was terrible. People jumped out of the windows to end their misery a little quicker. God. But my mother survived that. Her brother was on the Jewish committee, and he hid her in a coal cellar till the transports left. When he got me a job scrubbing the people's filth, vomit, excrement, out of several apartments, and I managed to smuggle her out. Eventually, she and my father both ended up in Auschwitz. They died there. Where are you going? You didn't drink your coffee. I just thought of something. My father mentioned that Anya used to keep a diary, and I vaguely remember seeing them in his shelves in the den. I doubt it. I would have noticed them. Well, there's so much junk in there, it's worth a shot. Look at all this stuff. Old menus he picked up on cruises, a pile of stationery from the Pines Motel. Incredible. Four 1965 dry dock savings bank calendars. I'll bet he never even had an account there. He drives me crazy. He won't even let me throw out the plastic pitcher he took from his hospital room last year. He's more attached to things than to people. I really don't know how long I can take him. I really don't. I better be getting home. I'll look for those diaries next time. Wait! Put everything back exactly like it was or I'll never hear the end of it. Okay, okay, relax.